So this is really exciting to be here. Uh, I want to start by just saying, you don't know how exciting it is to be able to sit next to a governor <laughs> and actually talk about things you agree with and the kind of future you want to build together. And you know, the first time I had the opportunity to do that, we were testifying on the minimum wage at the state legislature. And this is the kind of governor we wanted and we're getting done the kind of things we wanted to get done. So I'm really excited about this. This is an important project in Montgomery County. It is replicable as I look at those apartments across the street. You know. and, and I think, you know, Mr. Olofsky is a good ambassador for this because he's a businessman at the end of the day. This is not a charity project. He told me what, what his return on investment would be. He's the kind of person that needs to talk to that kind of owner and say, if you don't do this for moral reasons, do it for your pocket. Because I don't care who contributes to fighting climate change for whatever motive, as long as you contribute to fighting climate change. If it's good for you in the pocket, do it for that reason. If you just understand the morality of it, do it for that reason. But just do it. Um, I'm lucky enough to have solar panels on my house, I can tell you that I have, my panels cost me less every month than my savings in my electric bill. And some months it's substantially different um, than what I'm paying. And when I filed for federal tax credits, it covered the entire third I put down on the solar panel. So for those of you who are thinking, or if you know people who are thinking, it's real and it works. And it, at a personal level, it made a lot of sense. So I was glad to see that I wasn't surprised. But um, this is, you know, the largest project in the county for the moment. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully there will be a competition for largest pro um, projects in the county. And it does support our goal of reducing greenhouse gases 80% by 27 and 100% by 2035. It's in an equity emphasis area in the county, which is important. And in Seneca Village, it's a community with 90% of the apartments have rents that are affordable at 60% of area median income. You can say that about almost nothing in Montgomery County. So not only is this the right project in the right place, but these are people who really need that kind of support and help. I thank you for doing this here. You probably could have done it anywhere and made the payback in seven years. Um, doing it here is, I think, a really big deal. And I want to thank the Green Bank for everything they're doing. In 22, you had nearly 50 unique transactions, 27 homeowners, 19 commercial properties. I was just talking to somebody out there in the audience about the number of projects they've got stacked up that people have approached them on in the commercial sector for making a similar kind of tra transition. So we want to make sure we do as many of these as possible, and it's great that we're able to use our resources. And in the broader picture of climate change, you know, there are the three sectors that we know contribute to it. And the, the most intractable one is basically the grid. And I can see the transition to vehicles. That, that transition is going to happen. It's only a question of when. And it was only like three or four years ago people were saying, oh, 2035 people will start buying electric cars. This is happening now. And the second sector is the building sector. And now we're seeing more and more people. We've built, we've built our first buildings all electric, not small buildings, which are not so hard to do, but giant buildings like Marriott Headquarters, like the apartments being built at White Oak Gateway. These are real things that are happening, and there are more projects to come. So this transition in the building sector, I think, is becoming far and far more possible. I saw panels when I was in Taiwan. I was asked to speak at a, at a climate change conference, uh, Smart Cities, and I was on a panel on climate change. Um, I saw bifacial solar panels that generated electricity from the obvious source, the sun, but they generated out electricity on the other side of the window from the internal lights in the rooms. And so all that, think about all those electric electrons that go to waste, there's now technology that'll be embedded in panels that'll serve both the interior and exterior of these buildings. And the most intractable part is that grid, and I want to thank the governor again. Your action on wind is huge. Um, the ability, you know, we've actually talked to some of those companies. I was trying to figure out how do I take off, I actually talked about can we buy all your electric and send it to Montgomery County. Uh, <laughs> but it's a complicated process. But the ability to onshore that wind and get it into the grid, it overcomes one of the major impediments to greening the grid. 
And so 2035, I could, I could check the box on 2035 for two of the three sectors. Did not know how to check the box on the grid. This kind of action at the state level, coupled by this kind of action at the rooftop level, actually probably means we could do this by 2035. And I want to thank you for your leadership. It takes a lot of guts to do that. Um, you put yourself out there in a place that some people are saying, why? I deal with these talk show hosts from Baltimore. who are like, you know, why is what you're doing going to change, you know, what's happening in the county or the world? And the fact is, it will, because if people see it works, and they understand from a businessman that it makes sense economically, this problem will take care of itself as soon as people just oppose it, stop opposing it just for opposing it. So thank you so much. Thank you for the opportunity to speak.